ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. take on the Denver Broncos in an AFC West showdown. It's the NFL season finale on this special edition of Monday Night Football. And ball tonight. Off the bust of oh, wow. And the final regular season weekend kicks off right here at Mile High Stadium. Still so many teams chasing so much, including the Kansas City Chiefs, who are in play for the top seed if they can emerge with a 13th consecutive win over their divisional rivals. 39 degrees at kickoff, cloudy, about a 70% chance of precipitation could arrive in the second half. We'd vote for snow, Kirk, but it may be a little rain. Good to go now, though. Denver in January, you want a little snow, right? Set the mood. Denver won the toss, and Vic Fangio says we will take the football and put Kansas City area native Drew Locke on the field. Talked in the open a bit about how much was at stake for him personally. Hasn't had much of a chance. Lost the battle in training. Captain Teddy Bridgewater was out because of a concussion. Locke's played okay the last couple of games, but hasn't gotten Ws. Well, last year when he was a starter for 13 games, he threw 15 interceptions, which was tied for the most in the entire league. And so his decision making has been questioned. That's why he lost a job to Teddy Bridgewater. And now he gets a chance here. A couple starts the last few weeks, and he wants to go out against a really good opponent and try to play well and show people what he can do. Mike Boone deep for the Broncos just in case Harrison Bucker allows a return. Every kicker enjoys kicking at 5,280 feet. And Bucker drives the kick into the end zone. So if you take out the Detroit game, this Bronco offense just four touchdowns in the last four. What can Drew Locke do getting guys like Tim Patrick and Jerry Judy back at receiver do against this really stout Chiefs defense? Yeah, it's a defense that also we talked about in the open is looking to rebound. Now they didn't play well against Cincinnati. They had been playing very, very well in, in uh, really the second half of the season. So he's going to get the, the, the Chiefs A game, their best effort. They want to create some momentum getting ready for the postseason. So this will be a good matchup to see how Drew can perform against his defense. Melvin Gordon, the veteran, hasn't been available last week, gets the start. Lock under immediate pressure as the ball is batted down. It was Willie Gay, the long, fast linebacker. Well, they, they've got tremendous speed at the, on the edge of this defense. They're able to apply that kind of pressure here early, just trying to use a little misdirection with that jet sweep. but. Give Gay, who's an athletic linebacker on the inside, partnered up with Anthony Hitchens. Give him credit for getting in there quickly and getting that hand up to knock it down. He's a second-round pick out of Mississippi State. Very, very speedy. One of the fastest linebackers around. It's a second-down run. And plowing ahead for about five yards. He is Gordon. Time for tonight's Star Watch, brought to you by Windows 11 and Intel. Guys to keep an eye on, Kurt. Well, you know, Drew Locke's going to need some, some help, obviously, today. He's got a really good rookie running back in Javante Williams out of North Carolina. Uh, just can do it all. Catch the ball to the backfield, run physically. They'll need that. Jerry Judy, you mentioned Patrick and Sutton. Judy needs to, to win some one-on-ones. Chris Jones, as good as you'll see on the inside. He and Aaron Donald. The probably two of the best in the inside and Tyra Matthew really become one of the anchors and leaders of this Chiefs defense making sure everybody's aligned and, and ready to play. Third downs have been a struggle for the Broncos. They need four in this opening possession and Locke's going to take a shot downfield and he just overshot Jerry Judy. Speeds out of Alabama just missed him and it's a three and out. Yeah they went right after him. I know it's a, taking a chance on third down but we just talked about the Bengals and Jamar Chase and what they did against this secondary. They had a big day and Ward is beaten there by Judy that, and Ward was the one he was in phase many times against Jamar Chase that time he's beaten and he caught a break by that uh, just being overthrown. Sam Martin, who just cleared the COVID list, a booming punt. Nicole Hardman driven all the way back to the six-yard line. 
He slipped. The turf is a little soft and wet here. He didn't get good footing and gets only a few yards on the return. And Mahomes and the Chiefs backed up to the eight-yard line. Caden Stern, who gets started safety today, made the tackle on special teams. A key matchup here between the Broncos defense, which is third in the NFL in scoring defense. Very unusual to rank that highly and miss the playoffs against this Chiefs high-powered offense. Yeah, I can't, can't really, can't wait to watch Patrick Mahomes in this offense against this defense. Most teams this year forcing the Chiefs to play uh, very patiently, sitting back in coverage and not giving up the one-on-one -on -one shots that Patrick Mahomes enjoyed earlier in his career. And he's learned, as we said, he's learned to become a much more patient quarterback. Opening handoff to Darrell Williams, the undrafted free agent at LSU. Clyde Edwards Alaire not quite ready to go this week, won't play. It is nice to see these linebackers get a chance. Look at 55 right there, Chubb. Nice to see him back and, and healthy to play. He's only played in five games this year, dealing with some injuries, but he's the, the leader of this team. And talking to him on, on our Zoom this week, could say hey you guys don't have a chance to get to the postseason he's just a competitor just a warrior he's out here going to give it at all his all today after what's been a very tough year for him yeah. on several fronts Mahomes sidearm pitch Hardman cannot get the corner and this this look like a fired up Denver defense will give Mahomes a third and long Kyle Fuller filling in for Sertan forced him out one of those new faces in the secondary. Yeah, and Patrick Mahomes in a Chiefs offense because of the decision by Hardman to, to take that punt, return the punt instead of letting it go. You know, they're, they're dealing with some tough field position here on their opening drive. They netted 60 yards, the Broncos did. Yeah. Chiefs best in the entire league on third downs because of number 15. Whether it's an open receiver or if you got them all covered, he can use his legs to keep a play alive and either scramble for the first down or buy enough time to find the open man. Mahomes, well protected, takes off, tries to make it with his legs, and he'll slide down for a first down across the 20. We just talked about how, you know, if you're if you're good enough to defend, the one thing you have to be careful of is, is what he can do with his legs. There's nobody there in the middle. Look at the middle of this defense, and that's what Patrick Mahomes recognizes. He sees some man coverage, nobody there, and even deep close to his own goal line, still has the athletic ability to pull out of there and be able to pick up that first down. 11-yard scramble on the third and seven. Mahomes wanted to launch downfield. Pringle was well covered, just throws it away. And, and Vic Fangio as a head coach and really helps out so much on this defense. When we talked about it, how do you, you've done well in the past against this offense and Patrick Mahomes. What do you do? What's the key? He said, man, there, there is no, there isn't one key. There's several keys. You have to constantly mix up your looks and give him, whether it's single high safety or two high, just constantly giving him different looks to create some hesitation. Quick pitch to Hardman. And he's got space. Gets by Fuller and is finally spun out of bounds up across the 40. See, this is when he has a cushion. He's got a run play on, but he's got a chance because he has a cushion to get the ball out to space. You know, you see Tyreek Hill in these positions. McCall Hardman also is a 4-3 kind of guy. And if he sees that he's got a, one of his faster receivers with enough room and a blocker in front, he's going to take that. And it's all about yards after the catch if defenses are going to sit back. Hartman comes in motion. They hand it to Williams running to the left. Interesting to watch this Chiefs offense because whether it's Hartman or Hill or Kelsey, they don't have a true slot guy. They really have a lot of movable pieces, don't they? Yeah, I think Andy Reid has developed this offense around Patrick Mahomes' versatility and, and understanding of what to do with the football. It's almost like if an offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator get into it an argument. Usually they say the guy with the chalk last wins that argument. Well, with Patrick Mahomes, his ability to recognize coverage and get the ball out, he's got the chalk last. See how fast the Chiefs have started. Empty backfield. Mahomes delivers across the field. And it is catch made there by Byron Pringle. I think, I think a lot of that has to do with just the job that they do with Andy Reid in this offense of prepping and, and putting together their script of plays, of, of variety of formations and personnel groupings, seeing how the defense that they're going to play that week reacts. And they usually are putting together a, a, a sequence of plays that's going to give them a chance to be pretty effective in that opening drive. 
You speak kind of a slow starting offense. This year they took the challenge of the coaches to kind of get things going quickly. And they've done that. Mahomes almost intercepted, threw it right at the defender. And it's uh, Michael Ojemudia, who is one of those guys filling in at corner who had it right in his hands. Yeah, and, and I think he's expecting Pringle to continue to work to the inside. Instead, he just kind of turns right out of his route to come back to Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes wanted him, because of the coverage, to continue to work into the middle. And uh, Mahomes, and you can see, a little frustrated, a little miscommunication with he and Pringle not quite on the same page. Draymond Jones, third year man out of Ohio State, who's done a good job delivering some pass rush pressure since the trade that sent Von Miller away from Denver. Encroachment, defense number 96. It's five yard penalty, second down. Shelby Harris was, was questionable, hasn't practiced much this week. Good to go to start. It's been going out of Illinois State. Been that kind of year for, for Vic Fangio and, and this defense. I mean, they, they've had so many injuries last week with COVID, and I've, I've been so impressed with how they continue to, to play and continue to fight and live up to the standard. There's, they're still third in the NFL in scoring defense, despite somewhat of a revolving door up front and at linebacker. Also third in yards allowed. Mahomes bumped into as he throws, delivers it to Demarcus Robinson. Who is near the marker at the 32 yard line? It'll be spotted, I believe, just short. You play good defense, usually doesn't translate to a losing record. No team has finished in the top three in terms of points allowed and been under 500 since the 93 Bears. Speaks to their offensive futility here. Yeah, it does. Six offensive linemen in for the Chiefs, as well as Mike Burton, the fullback, and they hand it to Williams, who barrels for a first down down near the 30. If you've not seen the Chiefs a lot this year, th th this is a great example of who they have had to become this year. You know, they, they started this drive deep in their own territory, and, and you think about Mahomes and Kelsey and Hill over the years, you think of explosive plays. This year, this is what defenses are doing to them. Make them be patient make them work down the field methodically and not give up those those big touchdowns and, and I, as we said earlier Mahomes after starting the year three and four they've really found a rhythm and they've shown their ability to be more patient Mahomes will launch downfield that's Robinson but it's way out of the end zone and yeah, they rarely go three and out Kirk fewest in the league and that's a big reason why they average you know more plays per drive than anybody and also because more dink and dunk, yeah. less Tyreek Hill, house calls from long distance. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and I think, uh, not to say that they still can't do that. Yes. I mean, if a defense is willing to blitz them, which you don't see a lot of, and they're willing to play man, you know, they, they, they obviously are more comfortable uh, in, in being able to get uh, get downfield, but it's been, it's been fun to watch them grow this year, as good as they are. Play 12 of this drive. Underneath, and that's the first time that Big Travis Kelsey has been targeted, and he's near the marker at the 21. You know, I've been watching him, you know, go back to his days in college, he was in Cincinnati, but when you see him in person, uh, just a, a, a massive man and a tough matchup for a linebacker or a safety. You bring a safety up on him, and, he, and he's, he's too physical, too big, a linebacker, and he's too athletic. That's why a lot of times you'll see him use a linebacker and a safety, especially in obvious passing situations on him. Third one, Williams after a, a less than balletic handoff from Mahomes that time will again move the sticks. Yeah, I, I, I think even Mahomes was like, oh my, he went back to check it. That ball almost was out. You could see him slip. It, the other, you know, if you see from the other side of it, that ball was out, and Williams was able to, to secure it, hold on to that. But I, you could see Mahomes' reaction to that. He, he, was, he was thinking that that ball might be on the surface. Footing's going to be an issue today, maybe even for quarterbacks. Jarek McKinnon, situational back, is in the game. They'll motion back into the backfield on this first down play. Broncos again, nowhere near Mahomes. 
He buys some time, gets the edge, takes off, and for a second time in this possession has scrambled for a first down. It's first and goal. Well, they do a good job of, of picking up the crossers. Pringle was working into the middle of the field. He's, he's right here. He gets picked up by the safety. Everybody, for the most part, is, is taken away. But this is what you love about Patrick Mahomes. Right there, just a little pump fake, and a linebacker, Griffith, is frozen, actually elevated, and it made it easy for Mahomes just calmly to work around him and pick up more first down yardage. And first down, sidearm pitch, airmailed quickly by Pringle. So a pair of 11-yard scrambles for Mahomes in his possession. Again, he and Pringle are going to have to talk when they get on the sidelines. At that, that time, I think Pringle, again, not coming out of his break and working to the outside. He just kind of came out of his break and turned back. And that quick flip, that little shortstop flip that Mahomes does so often, it was going to be right on the money and probably a touchdown. Three receivers to the right in the second and goal. Hartman now comes across in motion. Patrick back panel slipped as he delivered it. Hardman slips down. And it's a loss of one. Third down coming up. With big cushion there because of the respect that, that Callahan has for, for Hardman. And of course, you're deep in your own territory. But you see how soft they are. Hardman, that's a, kind of an option route. If they're in tight, I'm going to work around them. If they're off soft, I'm just going to kind of turn and, and get the football and try to do something after the catch. Pretty good job by Callahan keeping him out of the end zone. He's quick. Big moment here for this Denver defense. Play 17 of the drive. It's Hardman lined up behind Mahomes. Patrick lofts it into the end zone. Easy touchdown for Travis Kelsey. And the tight end with his 57th career touchdown, capping a marathon 91-yard drive. Yeah, watch Kelsey just show, you know, third down, he's showing that he's going to help out on a blitz, and then he just kind of gets lost. He showed protection, sets up, linebackers get their eyes in the backfield, and then he just slides into the, on a delay into the, into the other, uh, opposite side, and easy play once the defense is, is full. Great example, Kirk, what you were talking about. This is the new methodical Kansas City offense. They chew up almost eight minutes, backed up their nine, a couple of scrambles for first downs, doesn't matter. 17 plays, 91 yards. That's 2021 Kansas City right there. Kelsey just voted to the Pro Bowl for the seventh time. Puts the Chiefs on top early here. The Chiefs for a 10th consecutive game have scored a first quarter touchdown. It's the second longest streak ever going back to Washington in 1983. They deliver to Travis Kelsey who caught a couple of passes on the drive. Coming up next in Philadelphia the Cowboys and the Eagles 8 o'clock Eastern time. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick standing by to call that one. On ESPN, ABC, ESPN Plus. I mean, is Andy Reid happy with look at that smile. You don't see that very often. Opening drive, 17 plays, 91 yards, 7.49 off the clock. Pretty good start. He converted four third downs there, including the two scrambles by Mahomes. 150th career touchdown pass for Patrick. The milestones to follow. And there's Butker slipping. And he's the guy that slipped on the field goal try in the warm-up. Witten changed his cleats. It really seemed to unnerve him. Very big athletic kicker yeah. and hit the deck on the kickoff yeah. that time. He, he's been tentative in pregame, changing his cleats a few times, and and here he just loses it. You know, let's let's go back to what what was going on with with Butker in pregame. We noticed this. We were down on the field a couple different times. He changed his cleats. You know, he's like, let's let's try this with my plant foot. Went back to the original cleats, and you know, right now the last thing you want for a kicker is to deal with stuff in his mind. I got enough to worry about just trying to make kicks. About five inches is all a couple of days ago here. This field is heated, and it's, it's definitely soggy at this point. Javante Williams now in a tailback, the physical rookie out of North Carolina, who had a career day against the Chiefs in the first meeting, 100 yards rushing. He was also an effective receiver, picks up just a couple there. Well, as this game goes on, this is a Denver offense 
that has struggled in recent weeks to run the football. And, you know, the, if you look at the last week, they had 83 yards to r running the ball against the Chargers, against the Raiders, 18 yards, against the Bengals, 133. So if Drew Locke's going to play well today, they've got to have more rhythm and, and more consistency running and throwing. Locke, a very deep drop on play action. He'll launch his second downfield shot. And in double coverage there, Jerry Judy is again the intended receiver. Tyron Matthew joining to various Ward in coverage. You know, he didn't have anybody open here, but this is what Drew Locke has got to avoid, is that corner Ward dropping back to, as you said, Chris, the double team to help out Tyron Matthew. You know, that was his issue last year. That was that was what drove Vic Fangio crazy in this offense with Pat Shermer was if you look at Drew Locke, he's physically, I mean, he looks the part of an NFL quarterback. But as we see with a lot of young guys, they need reps and decision making and accuracy or everything for any quarterback. And that's where Drew is still trying to grow. Need eight to avoid another three and out here. Lock a long throw way over the head and Cortland Sutton good pressure from Jaron Reed and there are some early boos from this Denver crowd that's seen way too much of this on offense lately. Yeah Jaron Reed right here and, and you'll, you'll see this offensive line kind of get caught up a little bit of a move to the inside by Frank Clark that frees up Jaron Reed. Chris Jones gets all the attention in the inside but the two together Jaron Reed and, and Chris Jones have been really just taking this defense and made them more violent, more physical up front. Lock keyed up, but an 0 for 4 start for the quarterback. And as Sam Martin goes back to punt, he is knocked to the ground. Zane Anderson came in trying to block it and got the punter. The call from referee Brad Rogers here. And he, he, he thought he had it. I mean, he went all in. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number 39, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. When you're struggling on offense as much as Denver is. You need any spark you can get, and they get one here with a personal foul. Well, especially the way this game has started, right? I mean, all the buildup of this game is the frustration for Denver, Kansas City, the great year that they're having, and then to start the way it has, they go two, three, and outs. After the long drive, you know, now they get the ball back at midfield after the, the personal foul. Let me ask you about Drew Locke. You know, he's been hounded for not taking care of the ball. He's done so in recent weeks, but he said, you take care of the ball and you lose. Yeah. That and a quarter will get you a donut. I don't know where you can get a donut that cheap, but you get his point. So he's coming out trying to make big plays early here, but not successfully. This is, to me, a really good formula against the Chiefs. Get Williams going because he's hard to tackle. Yeah, again, but, but they've struggled to sustain blocks up front. It's a good theory to get Williams going, but it's it's tough to do. Drew Locke, Drew Locke is, a, is a guy that I think a lot of people in the league look at and, and think that he's got tremendous upside. It's just people are waiting to see his development of going back to the things that I talked about. He does need to be a bit of, he's, naturally, he's a gunslinger. The guy we watched in Missouri, he's a gunslinger. That's how, that comes naturally to him. He's had to try to kind of recalibrate his game. You're, you're right, you don't want to be too conservative. Williams running left, and he's going to be knocked down after a short gain by Legereus Sneed from his corner position. It'll be third down, and the Broncos will need about four. I, I think Legereus Sneed, is become a really good weapon for this defense. You, know, you look in the inside, Chris Jones, Melvin Ingram, when he came over from Pittsburgh, Tyron Matthew, these guys get a lot of attention, even Hitchens in the middle. But Sneed, off that edge, playing that nickel, that slot corner, does so many different things as that hybrid, and often in run support, as you saw right there. Figures the Denver has two plays to get this three yards. Fangio's been going for it a lot on fourth down. Won't have to make that decision as Williams shakes free and does have a first down inside the Chiefs 35. How about the rookie Miners here? Out of Wisconsin, Whitewater does a really good job. Watch that right guard 77 against Chris Jones. Kicks him out, opens that hole up, and as you and I know, Javante Williams, he doesn't need a lot of room. He's a physical back but has good suddenness and quickness. But the big right guard Miners that time with a great block on the All-Pro, Chris Jones. Yeah, nicknamed the gut, right? He, he's a guy that went to the senior yeah. bowl and a name for himself, <laughs> showing that big gut. Melvin Gordon back in for Williams now in his first hand play. He's got it. And, you know, Melvin would like to finish this season with a big game, whether it's 
to showcase his skills for his next team. Finished up his seventh year. Yeah, it's a nice combination that they have. How about the patience here? Good block by Noah Fant. Watch 87 on the edge there against Melvin Ingram. Sustaining that block. A little hesitation. And then he sees the little crease there for Ingram to pick up positive yards. This is what you want, right? This is where you're staying on schedule. You're at second and five and third and two. That, that's where they want to live today against this Chiefs defense. Lock on the move and slings it downfield, but again, out of bounds. He's been substantially off target. Again, Judy was the receiver in the area. Yeah, I, I, I felt like he came off of this play action. He felt the pressure. He actually looked back and saw Frank Clark. Watch him look back and see Clark, and I think that hurries his clock. Watch him come here, and then you feel that pressure. He looks, and now instead of being patient and waiting, there's no reason to throw that ball. He had an inside receiver in Patrick that would have been open, but he looked, got a little bit nervous because of the respect that he has for Frank Clark, but Clark is picked up by the tight end. So it's third and four. Patrick and Fan off to the left, and that's the direction that Locke is looking, and it's his first completion to Tim Patrick, and the Broncos do have the first hand of the 22. Good call there. Nice job of being able to just a little rhythm throw here. Get it to Patrick. He's going up against a corner that's soft. Fenton sitting back in rhythm. And again, going back to staying on schedule. Third and four, manageable. You don't have to worry about the pressures. They're so multiple. Chiefs like to dial it up with Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator. So... Trick play here, direct snap, and now Cortland Sutton throws it down the middle, and a completion to the six-yard line by Fant. Locke moved out to the receiver position, and Pat Schirmer throws a wrinkle at the Chiefs, and it works. How about Sutton? I mean, this is big time here. He does a nice job of working through his progressions here himself, goes around, but watch him look right, and then comes all the way back to his left, to be able to find Fan, He wanted to throw that ball to the right, thinking the defense would be caught off guard, but they're not. So he comes all the way back and finds the big tight end. Nice play. Has he been watching Mahomes? Saved up kind of a sidearm was, delivery by Sutton. That was beautiful. Denver threatening here. Williams. Wants to elude traffic in the backfield. Picks up a yard. Jaron Reed on the stop. And the drive prolonged, Kirk, by that personal foul, the roughing of the punter. Remember, this is a Denver offense that last week, when they played the Chargers, they were inside the five-yard line three times and came away with one touchdown. So this has been a big emphasis this week with Pat Shermer, the offensive coordinator, and this offense. Hey, we're going to get our shots in the red zone. We're going to get inside that five-yard line, and we're scoring touchdowns. Against Mahomes, we cannot kick field goals. Pulls it down, can take off, and he'll score standing up. So Denver gets a boost from the personal foul and marches it 67 yards in 12 plays. Chris, watch the linebackers with the crossers. Look at their eyes getting caught up. Opens up a nice alley. Drew Locke recognizes the linebackers, kind of widening out, eyes on a swivel, looking to see who's coming on those crossers. It opened up the middle. There's the athletic ability. We've been talking a lot about Mahomes, but Drew Locke is a good athlete himself and takes it for the touchdown. Yeah, he's still got the football. He's not letting go of that. So Denver, that trick play. The key part of that drive, Sutton delivering the strike. It all began with Anderson roughing under Sam Martin. And that was the spark the Denver offense needed. You get the running game going with Javante Williams, and then Drew Locke scampers in. Seven apiece, 26 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Locke just a one for six start, but the 16 yard connection from Portland Sutton. So Fant was the key play on that drive, and then Locke takes it in for five yards out. Fourth rushing touchdown in his career, and Denver is even. 
Nice answer with a little assist there with the roughing of the punter. Never hurt to take 542 away from Mahomes and the Chiefs offense. Pringle back deep. Brandon McManus was on the COVID protocol this week, had to clear one final hurdle this morning before being eligible. To Laura Rutledge. Chris, we're being told that Tyreek Hill hurt his heel in warm-ups out here. And so they're not classifying it as an injury, but they are saying that it could limit him in this game. We won't see him as much. You see Andy Reid talking to him about it right there. He's been on the sideline looking down at his heel for quite some time. Something to pay attention to with this Chiefs offense. I notice he just hasn't been out there, wondered about that. And with them already obviously clenching, you know, maybe they're just looking, trying to get through this game and, and get him healthy. You saw him go up and over Hardman, his teammate. Yeah, Hope he didn't hurt himself doing that. Mahomes with the long throw to the sideline, and that is Hardman. He's knocked down after about four yards. Here's the play we showed you. I mean, tremendous hops. His heel looked okay there. Yeah, he looks good there. I think your point's a good one, though, with bigger things ahead. Yeah. Pull him out. He did get involved in only four plays. That would be a break for the shorthanded Broncos secondary, and that have to deal with number 10. This is the end of the first quarter. Chiefs take it 91 yards for a score. Broncos answer. End of the first quarter here in Mile High Stadium on Monday Night Football's Saturday doubleheader. Seven apiece. Well, the only drive that Kansas City had in that first quarter was a 17-play drive, and it was a big early play. On that third and seven, teams were doing this, taking away receivers downfield. Mahomes' ability with his legs to keep plays alive on third down. He picks up a first down. A lot of quick throws. Just get your ball, get the ball to the athletes in space and let them do damage. He had another scramble on third down and then hits Kelsey for the touchdown. Longest drive in terms of plays in Mahomes' career. This is Williams, bounces it, and he's closed down quickly on the edge there. Caden Stearns is safety in the stop. Incredible. He's gotten used to this. I mean, he's still gonna always be a gunslinger, but taking what the defense gives and avoiding the pressing mistakes that he made in the first seven games. He's getting used to it. I don't know if he likes it, no. but he's getting used to it. Coming out of Texas Tech in those first two or three years as a starter in Kansas City, it's been it's been quick scores, quick quick strikes, and this year after the, the, the Super Bowl against the Bucks, everybody copying that defense, and he's had to be patient. Broncos with four man rush, getting nowhere near. And this is Williams out of the backfield. What a good story, undrafted free agent stepping in for his much more famous LSU former teammate Edward Zelaire, who's going to be back. For the playoffs, we'll check the flag foul. here. Roughing the passer, defense number 55. 15-yard penalty added on to the end of the run. First down. So Bradley Chubb hitting Mahomes a little late there and cost him 15. I mean, I was looking at Mahomes the whole time. This must have been really late. Oh, he put his left hand up into the face. And I think Mahomes looked around and said, "Well, you know, what's this all about?" It was the, it was two things: how late it was, and then the hand up into the face. Referee standing right there. He's going to call that. It wasn't much, but you know all eyes are going to be on number 15. Oh, yeah. You get away with nothing. Yeah. Lose the ball to Denver territory. He said it's been a frustrating year for Chubbs and some frustrating frustration showing there. I want to go back to what you said about, about Darrell Williams. I think it's a great point. You know, it, it, what a story. Talk about a, a guy that, that uh, it's easy to cheer for. Even at LSU, he's behind Leonard Fournette, Darius Geis. Yep. He's just like the other guy at LSU. Gets into the NFL, and he's sitting now behind Clyde edwards Hilaire, and yet keeps his mouth shut, keeps working hard, become one of the, the, the favorites on this roster, and takes advantage of the opportunities that he gets. He never fumbles, doesn't drop passes, very steady. Mahomes with a low and outside pitch to Kelsey there. Covered by Bryce Callen and had a corner in the big guy that time. Yeah, that was a strange throw. I, I, very rarely do you see Mahomes. He's looking up the scoreboard himself to try to figure out what happened. That ball just kind of came out, came out low, but you could see as soon as he threw it, he didn't really follow through, didn't like it. But, uh, another third down here for Kansas City. Now they're five for five, lead 10 here. 
bunch formation. Jerk McKinnon is the back. Mahomes scrambled. Flag out. They get him anyway. Back at the 40. Shelby Harris playing on a tender ankle. Got home that time. What a push up front. Holding offense. Number 62. That penalty has declined. Results of the play. Fourth down. Watch the inside. Draymond Jones on the left going against Tooney. Goes right through him. And 96. Harris just never gives up on the play and eventually gets to Mahomes. That's a beautiful thing in the NFL when you don't have to blitz and you can rely on your front four to get that kind of pressure. Denver kind of a middle of the pack sack team didn't have one against Justin Herbert last week but a 15 yard loss pushes Tommy Townsend back and the ex Gator booms a punt Kendall hit will let it go over his head and a touchback. So the sack by Shelby Harris gets Denver's defense off the field. Lock and company back to work 7 7 early second quarter a mile high. Well, Denver, the last time they had the ball, they catch a break. First of all, with the opening kickoff, they get the ball to 35 after Butker slips, and then they go three and out, but they catch a break, roughing the punter. How about this little razzle dazzle? Portland Sutton showing that he can work through the progressions. Makes a nice throw to eventually set up Drew Locke for the touchdown to tie this game up. We've gotten Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon going with the ground game reasonably well so far. 58 yards. And Denver from the 20. Gordon back in. Melvin cuts it back, breaks a tackle, breaks another, and another. Melvin Gordon, welcome back to the fold for the veteran ex Badger out near midfield. Nice job here by Drew Locke, mixing up the cadence. He knows his defense is coming down, and he's able to get that right side, led by Cameron Fleming, to kind of just keep pushing down. Fant gets involved in there. And then Gordon, who's, who's fresh, he just looks good today. Complimenting Williams does a nice job with his vision and shows he can still pull out of those arm tackles. Remember, Kansas City last week had issues tackling the Bengals as well. That is she really tackling physical back so your honey badger got thrown to the ground by Gordon that time. Gordon again kind of lost his footing as he began to come forward to take the handoff and gets about five. Offensive line doing a pretty good job and, and one of the things I'm noticing Drew Locke doing is just mixing up the cadence. You know like you got to remember talking to these offensive coaches from Denver they say he came over from Missouri he's in one of those offenses where they're holding up cards one word play never huddling the, the nuances of the position are all new to him in the NFL so mixing up the cadence recognizing how to try to help his offensive line by doing that those are those are big steps for Drew Locke. Williams hammers forward it's a first down you know some NFL guys still have disdain for the kind of offense you just described but it's definitely becoming more and more common on Sunday kind of yeah. coming up from college yeah. football. Yeah I mean you look around the NFL and you, you, you definitely see Lamar Jackson in Baltimore Kyler Murray in Arizona yeah I mean it's more and more I think even Andy Reid. I mean, he's a Big background time. of a West Coast guy. He looked at what what his quarterback was really good at doing at college at Texas Tech, Pat Mahomes, and he said, you know what? Instead of me trying to make these guys figure out the West Coast, I'm going to take advantage of his skill set and grow my offense around his strengths. Worked out pretty well so far. Smart guy, Andy Reid. <laughs> Williams. Ooh. To break through the tackle there, Frank Clark, who prevented a big gain. Well, offensive line doing a really good job up front. Cushion Berry, the center, 79. You'll see him work up to the linebacker. Nice job of just running hard, but they've got room to, to, to work right now. In these last three games, when we we're watching film to get ready for this game, there's nowhere. No push. Nobody sustaining blocks. And all of a sudden, they go against the Chiefs last game of the year, and they're opening up holes for them. Looking to throw on second and seven across the middle, finds a spot in the zone, and it's complete to Patrick. First down at the 26. 
Jerry Judy out in the flat affects the defense here where you see Sneed have to kind of work to the outside. Zone, as you said, Chris. Sneed works to the flat to Judy. Gave him a nice throwing lane to be able to make that throw. Another first down. Mix, mixing up the run and the pass very well. Pat Shermer on point right now with Drew Locke. Patrick, a guy who leads receiving core with five touchdown catches this year. There's Shermer in the hat in the middle there. And back to the ground game and Williams the Chiefs are ready for him. They ganged up on him. Matthew got there early. He spun out of one tackle wrestled down right near the line of scrimmage. We saw Javante Williams at North Carolina along with Michael Carter is having a very good rookie year with the Jets just pound away a converted linebacker until high school right Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you could see what he can do. You know, as being part of a combination, I, I love to see Tyron Matthew mix up different aspects of where he'll be in coverage. A lot of times in, at this point in his career, in ninth year, he's back deeper and, and Sneed's up closer to the line. That time they sneak him up and he makes the play for no yards. Gordon back in. And Chiefs beginning to hone in on that running game. Nick Bolton, the rookie from Missouri. What, what they're doing is they're getting off of blocks. Okafor that time, 97, did a nice job. And also you saw the linebackers. Bolton has been a huge addition as a rookie coming out of Missouri. Just a stud. Five new bodies for the Chiefs on this third down package. Chris well within field goal range for McManus. They need seven to keep the drive going. Chiefs bring some pressure. Locke escapes and takes off. Running all the way to the end zone. Drew Locke with his second touchdown today. Doing it on the ground, the Kansas City native. And Denver takes the lead for the first time. Well, they are really underestimating what Drew Locke can do as a runner, as an athlete on third down. Sorensen picks up a crosser. Matthew picks up a crosser. Nobody picks up Drew Locke. You have a blitzing linebacker that ends up taking Melvin Gordon. And then once again, poor recognition and tackling on the back end from the Kansas City Chief defense. Yeah, much better than average athlete at quarterback. Two rushes, two touchdowns. That was a career-long 23-yard scamper as the Broncos drive it 80 yards in eight plays and they lead the Chiefs by a touchdown midway second quarter. Well seven rushes one completion from Locke on that drive to Patrick and he takes it the final 23 yards Kirk. And, and, and again I, because we've watched him play a lot in college. Of course, you have to make throws from the pocket in the NFL, but this is the this is the modern day NFL quarterback. He's going to make a lot of throws, but on third down, his legs have got to be a factor. And I, and I just think the Chiefs maybe have underestimated what he can do on those third downs. Both those touchdowns, the underneath coverage, not even accounting, not it's not even a thought in their mind that three might take off and, and score a touchdown. Well, for an offense that has struggled in every category, especially in the red zone, that's one answer from the high red zone. A touchdown run for Locke. Went to leave some in high school, close to Arrowhead. Not a huge Chiefs fan growing up, he told us, but he and his dad went to some Chiefs playoff games. Of course, his college at Missouri. That's where his dad played for Andy Reid, and Andy Reid was an offensive line assistant way back for the Missouri Tigers. Extra fired up today. Hasn't been the passing start that he wanted, but a couple of rushing touchdowns. This is Derek Gore, Louisiana Monroe, who's been a good addition to this Chiefs running game with Edward Tillaire so, down. So let's go back to what we talked about even in the pregame with Steve and, and Susie and Booger, and we talked about it as well. How impressed we've been with the Chiefs and how patient they've been with how teams have had tried to defend them by sitting back and not letting them hit the big plays and they we saw that 17 play drive but now you're down 14 to 7 can you continue to be patient and continue to kind of stay with what 
you need to be able to do and not get impatient and try to make it all back in one play. There's a catch by Robinson and he's going to be slammed down at the 37. He may have to be Kirk with more reporting that Tyreek Hill's dealing with a heel issue and perhaps unlikely to return. Yeah. You know, I mean that, that's obviously a big loss one of the most electrifying player arguably in the entire NFL but nice route that time by Robinson. We've seen a couple times where he and a few of his receivers most notably Byron Pringle just not quite on the same page with maybe the route adjustments between what Mahomes was expecting. Mahomes on the move saw a little crease and scoots forward sliding down at the 43. Up six. I think he was waiting for Kelsey to kind of work across and, and be open. Watch the Chiefs defense. Watch Mahomes' eyes kind of look to him. He's taken away. Then good job by Denver's defense taking away his second option on the backside, Blake Bell. And that's good job of these linebackers. They are locked in, especially with 10 out. Tyreek Hill, they are locked in on, on Kelsey trying to keep him leveraged with a couple defenders. Just we expect a part of the quarterback run game has been the huge part <laughs> of this first half, right? That's right. You never know. Play clock winding down in second and four. Mahomes gets it out quickly, and it's complete slant into Denver territory. Pringle working in front of Utamudia. Patience again. Patience and a nice tight route that time by Pringle. He and Mahomes have missed a few early, but that time on the same page there on third down to keep this drive alive. Hardman got free, broke a couple tackles in that 21 yard gain. That's been the only explosive play for this Chiefs passing game so far, much like the first meeting. There's a wrinkle. Hardman takes the handoff and he scoots forward. The flag is down and it's going to be a hold against the Broncos. The play will stand first down to the 35. Oh, hands to the face. Hands to the face, defense. Number 93, five yard penalty, first down. And second on, it's Draymond Jones with the penalty. I, I like the wrinkle, though. I mean, McCole Hardman is, is very similar to Tyreek Hill. He's not as physical, but is, he's very, uh, he's a game changer, electric in space, and just getting his hands on the ball, different ways to try to get him incorporated into this plan, especially on first and 10 as a wrinkle. Go, go. Grant moves off to the slot on the left side. Mahomes took a look that direction. Now fires across the middle and it's incomplete. Broken up nicely by Ojemudia. Defending Hartman there. Star Watch brought to you by Windows 11 and Intel when the Chiefs have the football. You don't usually highlight a center, Mr. Herbstreit. No, how about that? I said, man, we, we got to talk about Creed Humphrey. He's become maybe as a rookie for out of Oklahoma, maybe the, one of the best centers, if not the top center in the entire league, the, the year that he's had. You know, they after giving up 29 uh, pressures against Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl, they went out and got four new offensive linemen this year. Couple rookies with Trey Smith next to him at right guard. Mahomes slips. Tries to mix up and happen on the move and throws all the way across his body. And it's Pringle who gives a stiff arm and is knocked down. First down yardage at the 21. And there it is. We, we can officially say you and I call the Kansas City Chiefs game now. It's official. I mean, there, there's the vision that nobody else, well, Aaron Rodgers has, but very few have this kind of ability to move around, keep his eyes up, and then come all the way back to the right side. That's against the rules. Like, you're not supposed to be able to do that. He comes all the way back. The defense has forgotten about this receiver, and he finds him, picks up the first down. He's created a few new rules, has me, for himself <laughs> and for the rest of quarterbacks around the world it's called, to watch this guy. It's called the Madden rules. It's a video game when he's playing. The Mahomes rules have taken over. You get a whole wave of young quarterbacks as Williams plows for a game. Have now come into the NFL. Plenty of guys playing college who've seen what he does and they love the off-platform throws, the improvisation, the yeah. creativity. And Mahomes paying tribute to the late legend John Madden in his pregame warm-up hoodie. Paying tribute with the hoodie and, and the style of play that he's had for the last four years. 
I asked Patrick, you realize how influential you are. A guy, yeah. a lot of guys without your skills try to do what you do at all levels of football now. You go empty on second and five. Gets it out quickly and trying to deliver across the yep. middle. That was to Tyree Kill, who did come back in the game. It was a skinny window. And brings up third and five. But look at look at the attention. He hadn't been in there much, but you got a defender to the outside, you got a linebacker to the inside. If you saw that from behind, the window was really tight. Now Mahomes is the ability, and we've seen it many times, where he's able to squeeze it into that tight window. But Denver doing everything they can anytime Ten's on the field to try to leverage him with two defenders. Broncos with a touchdown lead, trying to force a field goal attempt here. Chiefs five for six on third down. Need five. Good protection. And not even looking for the football was there, or Kelsey across the middle didn't have his head turned no. and a flag in the second half. He, he was engaged with Defense, Kyle Fuller. Number 23. Ball's placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And Kyle Fuller's out there on an island one on one against Kelsey. Kind of turns to the inside. He's forcing him to go to the outside, but instead Kelsey's working back to the inside and never got his head turned around because of being engaged there with the with the corner. Third down penalty keeps the drive alive. First and goal at the six now. Denver crowd has come alive. Trying to make it tough on Mahomes who rolls, back pedals, and delivers incomplete. Hardman sprinting across the back of the end zone. Jonathan Cooper. You know, Hardman's coming there. from the back side and, and love to see him throttle down that route. That was a really tough place play to execute. I mean, you see almost him as that sidearm throw that Mahomes will do, and very few do. But Mahomes, Mahomes throwing to a target there and Hardman going all out. That's a tough throw. And off. Williams cuts it back and he'll be dragged down at the three. Another flag is down in the holding area. They're going to give Creed Humphrey the center. Holding offense, number 52, 10 yard penalty, second down. It's a rare mistake by the rookie that you just highlighted there. As Tyree Kill limping noticeably off the field after that last play. Yeah, I'm surprised he's back out there. You really respect that he's trying to get out here with his team down, but there's a very noticeable limp. Or made the board came back in for still another in play and he's still in the huddle here. Yeah. So second and goal back from the 16. Holmes launches downfield. Williams tried to make a one-handed catch, but he was well covered by the rookie Baron Browning. And Baron Browning saw him one on one. It, it's just man on man running back against a linebacker. Good throw, perfect throw, and Browning's body is there. He never saw the ball, but he was in position in phase to make it tough enough there on Williams to come down with that catch. Browning getting a chance that inside linebacker core, the Broncos, so injury depleted. Alexander Johnson, Josie Jewell. Yeah, I lost two of them early. So Browning stepping in third and goal now. Blake Clark winding down. And Holmes looking to escape and create and fires right off the chest of Kyle Fuller, who missed a chance to make a pick, but the Broncos get a stop and force a field goal attempt. Yeah, I think he thought Tyree Kill was going to continue to get around Kelsey and come back to the ball. Watch up here where he starts to starts to kind of he goes down and then he works back around Kelsey and then for whatever reason goes back into the corner. As he was coming around Kelsey, that's when the ball was released. And I think he thought again that he would have a shot there at Hill in the in the front corner, and instead Hill went to the back corner. Showed you Butker's footing problems in the pregame and of the kickoff. It's got to be in his head as he lines up from 34 yards here. And the 
Former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket drives it through. Chiefs drive it 13 plays, 59, but the Broncos still up by four. ESPN's Monday Night Football from Colorado brought to you by Mercedes EQ and the all-new, all-electric EQS. This is for you, world. And Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Have your insurance paid up, Kirk, if you're going to do I, that I, little tree I, bashing I could, there. I could hang there a little bit. I can, I can hang around. You like to get it off piste, as they say, I, in as the long trees as, there? as long as it's a trail, I got, got to show that. There's a trail there. Ish. 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 Yeah, there's a <laughs> I wish we were here a little longer. Love we to go there. To we we, we, we got to do, we gotta get to end another time. Yeah, another Come out time. for spring skiing. You'll, you'll, you'll love it yeah, out here. I love it. Went to Telluride last spring, actually. Beautiful. So, Butker. I'm a Clydesdale. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Lead. It's not like I'm a double black going down there. Clydesdale. Get you snowshoeing. That's more your speed. <laughs> 2.18 to go, and Andy Reid's team again, because of that loss in Cincinnati last week, needing to win to have a chance at the top seed. Also need some help tomorrow from a, a Tennessee upset loss, going for win number 250. And it's been one of those uh, frustrating first halves. The yeah. offense has been moving the ball methodically, but they haven't been able to contain Drew Locke as a runner of all things I mean, today. The Broncos 105 yards rushing, a couple of those touchdowns you would include uh, Drew Locke only 33 yards through the air so it's been more about what's going on at the line of scrimmage for Denver to get to 14 in a first half is a big deal they've run only 23 plays so far Williams can you bounce it no heavy traffic early and then shoved out nice by Ward loss Remember, we started this broadcast. Denver won the toss, elected to receive, so the Chiefs do get the ball this to start the second half. So warning. you don't want to give Pat Mahomes the ball here, and then he gets it again to start Good the point. second half. Clock management, an issue here. Two-minute warning. Broncos protecting a four-point lead. Two minutes away from the USAA. Insurance halftime report, Sam Ponder, Randy Moss, Coach Ryan, Teddy Bruski, Matt Hasselbeck in the studio. Look ahead to the back half of the doubleheader. Those fresh faces on display for the Eagles as they host the Cowboys. They'll also preview the Georgia-Alabama National Championship game in Indy. We will head there right after this one. And we'll see if Stetson Bennett and the dogs can get some payback against Bryce Young. It was so brilliant in the first meeting in Atlanta. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see that. I mean, Nick Saban, so much experience as a head coach in these championship games. And Kirby Smart, who coached with him and won some championships, has come close. You know, that, that game that they had where Tua made that throw to Devontae Smith. But uh, we'll see if he can get it done. You saw Jerry Judy in the huddle. There's Nicole Hardman. They, the dogs thought they had him four years ago. They led by 13 they after did. he cut a touchdown before That's right. Tua turned things around. Can continue to mix up those that play calling. The snap count. Lock. Short drop. Pitches underneath to Patrick. And he's going to muscle ahead for a game that'll make it third and three. Chris, that's a great job there by Drew Lock. Gives him a chance here on third down. He showed patience sitting in that pocket. He went from his left all the way back to his right and got positive yards here. And they're thinking about Patrick Mahomes getting that ball as well. Big time. No, no urgency at the no, moment. Get the no, first down. No, work a little clock. And that first meeting again, Denver did a phenomenal job keeping Mahomes right there on the bench, chewing on the mouthpiece. That's right. Saw a lot of that in Arrowhead. Lock again takes off. And already two rushing touchdowns. That's a first down across the 35. And again, my guess the adjustment that Steve Spagnolo will make as a defensive coordinator of the Chiefs is a little bit more awareness of Drew Locke pulling it down, especially critical downs on third down and in the red zone. He's hurt, hurt this defense a few times today and, again, has the athletic ability to be able to pull out of there. I just like that he's showing patience there with his progressions and his reads. Last year, he would have forced that ball trying to make a play. Now you're less concerned about giving Mahomes the football back before halftime. Let's see yeah. if they get more aggressive here. Yeah. With all three, 16 to go. all three timeouts. Clean pocket. 
Again, an underneath throw. That's a very short gain to Judy. Just a couple yards. Denver also with those timeouts in hand. Is you going to spend one yet? No, doesn't look like it. No, I think they're waiting to see how this this play goes. And Kansas City also not uh, going to use any timeouts under a minute now. Longest completion by Locke, 11 yards. And again, he's got space. They lose track of the quarterback. Oh, he slips as he makes a cut. No fumble. And the ball will be placed at the 41. Third down coming up. Clock ticking away now. Just 35 seconds before halftime. And finally, Mangio will spend a timeout. The Mahomes timeout. freak out factor Denver. in play. As Denver's not being very aggressive in this possession. Non fumble, Brad Rogers crew sharp eyed, and John Perry, our rules expert, looking in on this one. The touch is crucial, right there, John? Right, we got both knees down with the touch in the back, and then the strip takes place. So it is down by contact. Nice job with the guys. Thank you, John. John working both this game and the Cowboys Eagles to follow in Philadelphia after failing to convert the first two third downs. Kirk Broncos have converted four in a row here. But again, just 35 seconds to work with. I asked Pat Shermer on the field before the game. You get to these third downs and they blitz you. They could blitz heavy. I know you want Locke to get the ball out. His legs could be a factor. He said we can also run the ball. I mean, you can run into that blitz. If you get picked up, it could be a big play. 80. Pressure. Ball out. And the catch not made. That was Cortland Sutton on the slant. Defended by Mike Hughes, and here comes the punt team. Boy, great play by Mike Hughes, because that is a well-thrown football. He's beaten to the inside, doesn't give up on it with the right hand. He knocks that ball loose away from Cortland Sutton. Otherwise, that's a first down. And Hughes, who just made the play, back to receive the punt. So Denver able to at least lead the clock down to 31 seconds before giving Mahomes a chance here late in the half. You don't get anywhere near Martin who drops the point and kicks it high and short. And for a catch made at the 15 yard line. 23 seconds to work with for number 15. The Chiefs find themselves big favorites down four heading to half. The road to Super Bowl 56 begins with the Super Wild Card Weekend, a doubleheader on Saturday, triple header on Sunday and for the first time ever a wild card Monday on ABC ESPN and ESPN 2 Chiefs who needed a win to stay in the hunt for the top seed knew that a loss could drop into three or four and have to really keep an eye on a bunch of different games tomorrow to figure out where they'll land unless they can come back here in the second half they figure to get too creative here do they 23 seconds Kurt no with Mahomes Checks it down to Williams who jukes his way to the 16 with 17 seconds left. Well, I don't think Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes give up on, on first halves very often when they have the football. I mean, 17 seconds, three timeouts. They're always thinking we're one big completion away from having a shot at a field goal. But even for these guys, I mean, you, you, this is still a tough ask. But look at Mahomes. He's dialed in. I mean, they, they're, they seem like they have their foot on their gas. 13 of 23, just 103 passing yards in the first half, and the one touchdown to Kelsey. And the move and a low throw, first down to Hardman. And briefly stopped the clock with 11 seconds. Timeout, Kansas City. It's their first. It's will a 30 second timeout. Give up, as you suggested, taking a shot. Well, this Denver team, they, they told us that they felt inspired, the, the losing streak against the Chiefs, 12 head-to-head -head going back to the Peyton Manning era. It's been a solid defensive performance, and a couple of key penalties for the Chiefs have been very important in the first half. Yeah, and their quarterback, Drew Locke, has played well. You know, he's a big part of what he's trying to do is, is make good decisions and give his team a chance, and you combine that with their ability to run the ball and, and play well at the line of scrimmage offensively. Been a pretty good half for the Broncos. It was that holding penalty by Humphrey down in the red zone, the forced field goal attempt, and the roughing the punter that prolonged Denver's first touchdown drive. Long throw over the head of everybody. Again, another example of Mahomes and his receivers just not quite on the same page. 
Mahomes just kind of flipping it out there. And both his receivers that time, Hardman and Pringle, nowhere close to where he's throwing it. 12 game stretch for the Chiefs. This four point deficit will be the largest at halftime. Doesn't it feel the, the very similar to how they when they matched up about four, five or six Does. weeks ago? Kind of the same vibe. Mahomes struggling, not not quite able to get timeout. into sync. Denver, their second. It's a thirty second timeout. This Denver defense has been pretty consistent all year, keeping them in games. It's been really about trying to get a little bit more production from the offense. Yeah, to me, you're exactly right. The bigger story has been a couple of touchdowns, unconventional ways. Drew Lock. Running a 23 yard play into the end zone. Yeah. Longest of his career. Completing just four passes in the first half. Not what he hoped for individually trying to showcase no, his no. skills. And, but again, and again, he'd take the double. But if you're evaluating him, he's taking what the defense is giving him. You know, and if you got to use your legs, so be it. Whatever it takes to put points on the board. Mahomes pressure, back pedals, and checks it down to Williams. This will be the final play of the first half, and he'll be tackled out across the 45-yard line. So these Broncos fans who were booing the offense early, different reaction here at halftime. The Chiefs chasing that top seed, They'll have to come from behind to keep alive their mastery of their divisional rivals. 14-10 in a very even first half. Lock with a couple of touchdowns. The USAA Insurance Halftime is coming up next. Lofts it into the end zone. Easy touchdown for Travis Kelsey. Trick play here. I mean, this is big time here. Lock pulls it down, can take off, and he'll score standing up. And ball tonight. Lock escapes to the end zone. His second touchdown today. And welcome back to Mile High Stadium. Chris Malley, Kirk Herb Street, Laura Rutledge. A surprising first half as Denver contains Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs offense and leads 14-10. And Mercedes EQ third quarter reset, Kirk. The Denver defense minus three starters in the back end playing well. Yeah, they get, they get pressure up front with four. And Patrick Mahomes yet to really get going. Again, four. When you can get four, look what you can do in the back end. It allows you to take away those big plays and take away even the underneath throws that Mahomes wants. And here a miscommunication and almost a turnover. So Patrick Mahomes in this offense with Andy Reid back in at halftime to make some adjustments to come up with some answers. But right now, losing the battle at the line of scrimmage up front. They get the ball here shortly. Meanwhile, the Broncos are backing up the talk that they gave us this week. This is a, a proud franchise, right? They're not used to missing the playoffs five years in a row, six straight years out of the postseason, losing records, and 12 straight losses to Kansas City. They look like a team I was gonna say, eager to end that. I mean, for, for considering what they've been through as a franchise, even here you could feel the vibe here for a couple days in Denver. Fans are frustrated. I mean, this is a spoiled franchise. They win football games here, obviously, for a long time. And yet, watching them play today, they got to be impressed with the, the effort, the attitude that they're playing with. It's a testament to me to Vic Fangio and the culture that he's created despite a lot of struggles and, and a lot of adversity. Chris Fangio's job future, one of the main topics here in Denver. We'll talk more about that in the second half as the Chiefs will take over after the touchback. To Laura Rutledge. Chris, Vic Fangio said it's imperative that his defense gets a stop here as the Chiefs get the ball. He said Patrick Mahomes is so dangerous, we can't let up. Offensively, he's really impressed by the way that Drew Locke has scrambled, but he said we know the Chiefs defense is going to adjust. we got to catch the ball better. That's going to be key in this second half. Broncos team likes their head coach better than a lot of fans. They will play for Fangio, especially this defense. They, these guys, Kurt, it. total pros. Gore has the football. Hesitation in hours forward for about six. I know we got a long way to go in this game, but this is this is a big fir first drive of the second half, as, as Laura just said. And it's because what can happen on the back end of this. You get him off the field, he's, he's not been able to find that rhythm. We just talked about it. No blitzing because of the way the front four is played. Tyreek Hill has been limping around and not playing much. But you get him off the field without giving up points and is a big lift to Denver. 
and you go down, and now you're reassessing where you are. And against the four mass runs, Kelsey makes the catch. So interesting to see a first half with zero blitzes, and we know all the metrics. Mahomes tears up the blitz, and Fangio says, forget about it. We're not even going to try. No, no. I mean, and, and again, I, I, I think he mixed up coverage. It wasn't as if they weren't they weren't being vanilla. They were mixing up a lot of different looks for him and the receivers, but uh, not not coming after him with linebackers or or, or, or secondary. Gore bounces to the edge and physical run by the former man out of Louisiana Monroe and Alabama and a junior college well traveled before he got to the NFL well, with Tyreek Hill on the sideline for most of that first half I think part of you know this this offense still kind of being stuck in, in second or third gear is taking one of your big weapons out and it means others like Hardman and Pringle obviously Kelsey's up to it but others are going to have to step up we've seen Robinson out there playing more as well Hill's had an interesting year. He's had three games where he's had 140 plus, but a bunch of other games where he's really been limited. Mahomes navigates through the rush and takes off. Patrick Mahomes into the secondary escapability and a first down inside the Denver 30. Uh, it, it ends up being a one-on-one -on -one play with him in the middle linebacker Wade, the rookie, and he's able to win that matchup. He just shakes him. You know, it's probably the aspect of his game that that you know when people talk about the no look passes and the creativity on throwing it the, the aspect of his game that often gets overlooked is what he can do actually taking off and running and picking up yards. He's a big physical guy but you can see he's got some shake too. 25 yard run better than the rest of the team so far. And there is Gore Bradley Chubb who was trying to chase him down had to come out and you know, huffing and puffing on the sidelines at the moment. I mean, that, that turned out to essentially be just a one-on-one -on -one against him and a linebacker and Wade. There's there's Chubb right there, as you said. Hey, Chris, watch this in the middle. Watch the linebacker. It's like, all right, okay, okay. Oh, missed it. And Chubb's chasing him too. The Chiefs get the ground game going early in the third and quickly threatening to reclaim the lead. Broncos do rush five. Mahomes gets the ball out to Hardman and a stiff arm first down near the 15. Ojemudia drove him out. Yeah, they flooded the zone, went deep with Pringle, opened it up underneath to Hardman. And again, Hardman, much like Hill, he just needs a little bit of room to work with. If they're going to sit back, no problem. Throw it underneath and let 17 do his thing yards after the catch. And there he picks up that first down. Chubb still on the sideline trying to regroup. They warn visitors against the thin air of the high altitude, but uh, it affects both sides. And he hadn't played a lot of football this year either. Point. There's a first down carry for Gore. He picks his way for a short game inside the 15. This drive almost, we'll see how it finishes, reminiscent. There he's back, good to see. If you're just joining us, the Chiefs open this game on their own nine yard line and went 17 plays, almost eight minutes, and had a touchdown. And, and this, this drive kind of feels like that. It has that same kind of vibe to it now. It's seven plays, 61 yards here. Now they're in the red zone. We'll see what, what they can do. Hartman moving around. Holmes fakes it to him, man. Falling down was Gore. He tried to flip it back to the running back, but he lost his footing. Yeah, they use that orbit motion with Hardman to get the defense's attention, and then he actually gives it a pump fake to his left. And all the attentions to the left, a little bit of a pump. They're just trying to set up to come back to Gore, and Gore just loses his footing. His feet get locked up there with big Trey Smith, the right guard, 65. You can see right there, just incidental contact and trips the running back. Big play here. Fangio telling Laura this was imperative to not let the Chiefs in the lead with the touchdown. They need seven on this third down. McKinnon is the back. Mahomes gets it to McKinnon, who's got a lot of space. And spins free! Eludes another tackler and barrels into the end zone. Derek McKinnon, the veteran out of Georgia Southern, gives Kansas City the lead. 
Some unusual weapons being employed this yeah. afternoon. Yeah, but the City. same plays. Stretch the defense downfield. Get it to one of your athletes in space. McKinnon, a very underrated receiver and what he can do coming out of the backfield. Nice job with the blocks downfield and a missed tackle there by Kyle Fuller that eventually led that to the end zone. Last thing Denver needed was an injury to a defensive back. Bryce Callahan, veteran out of Rice, pressed into duty. Again, Ronald Darby, Patrick Sertan, and safety Kareem Jackson all out. Good news is that Callahan is to his feet to the sidelines. And the Chiefs, another one of those long, methodical drives. Yep. Kurt, took him nine plays, 417 to get the 75 yards. The, the job that they've done in drafting players that, that you can get the football to, and they're just a great addition to the arsenal that Patrick Mahomes has. You know, we're not seeing Clyde Edwards Elaire, but you throw in Jarek McKinnon, Hardman, of course, Tyreek Hill, so dangerous after the catch. And sometimes not drafting, but signing them of right. the free agent market. Yeah. Boy, have they done a terrific job in that department. Brett Beach, Andy Reid and company. 17-14, Chiefs back in front early third quarter in Denver. This one's done in Denver, off to Philadelphia, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Closing in on the franchise touchdown pass record against the Eagles, who are sitting out a lot of players on this first ever 17th game of an NFL regular season. You're right here in Denver. The precipitation they had talked about not materializing. Some sun shining here. 400 plus sellouts of this stadium and the old mile high over 49 years. There's some empty, some fans have stayed away, but those who showed up liking what they're seeing. Wouldn't you put these two fan bases uh, right up near the top as far as passion? I mean, I know you've got some uh, Pittsburgh and other cities that are great traditionally, but uh, I mean, I, both these stadiums come alive for their teams. It, it, it comes alive a lot more when the Broncos are certainly in the playoff picture and after another losing season, they are eager to get back in this exact picture. And the Titans can just about wrap things up in terms of the top seed. They won't need to win in Houston if the Chiefs lose this. But uh, that will put pressure on Tennessee. And remember, they lost yeah. Houston earlier. Yeah, I mean, Titans trying to finish things off against Houston with Derrick Henry will not play, trying to rest him up before they get ready for the postseason. And Kansas City hoping that they were to somehow stumble. But some really exciting AFC games are going to dictate who ultimately gets into the postseason coming up tomorrow. There's the Patriots battling for the AFC East crown. And Gordon hit in the backfield by Melvin Ingram. It's been a great addition to this defense, the veteran yeah. from South Carolina. He moves at the last second to the inside and, and caught Fleming off guard. Here he is. You can see he's moving, and he's able to get through that gap unaccounted for. The guard, Miners, sees him late, but by then, there's just too much quickness. And I, I, a lot of people talked about this. This defense, from the time they picked up Melvin Ingram on November 2nd, the trade from Pittsburgh, it's been a totally different defense these last eight or nine weeks, minus the game last week against Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. From the pocket, it's broken up. Ingram unhappy with the playing time in Pittsburgh. He has brought a fresh energy here, and he's a big part of the defensive turnaround you talked about here. Look at that. That's, that is dramatic I mean, as it gets right there. You're giving up 29 points a game through seven weeks. Make a few moves. Ingram comes over. Most importantly, Chris Jones goes from outside to inside. And all of a sudden, these last few weeks, 15 points a game. And again, you keep got an outlier is that Cincinnati game last week. D-line stepping up. There was Jaron Reed at bat of the pass down, and suddenly some urgency for Locke on third and 13 as he takes his shot and hits Tim Patrick in stride. By far, Locke's best throw today, and they're in Chief territory. Well, they used Noah Fant to make Sorensen have to respect him on the hash. You're going to see Sorensen drop, but as he drops, Watch the watch the tight end hold him on the tight end route holds him and then opens it up down that sideline. See the safety have to respect the tight end. That's a tight window, but a heck of a throw there on third down by Drew Locke. Patrick's been the top target today. He's got four catches after missing last week's game. Locke's certainly happy to have number 81 back.
Warner's conversion on third and 13. Now Lott scrambles and just throws it away. That was quick pressure from Chris Jones. Doesn't it feel a little different here? I mean, that was a great th throw by Drew Locke, but this Kansas City defense, it just feels like they, they, they've cranked it up a little bit. A very different energy from them coming out here. Steve Spagnuolo, one of the top defensive coordinators in this league for many years. It's fascinating to talk to him this week and talk to going back to his roots when he was coming through the NFL. He's part of an incredible staff at Philly when Andy Reid was the head coach in Philly and Jim Johnson, one of the great defensive coordinators of all time. So many young coaches learned from him, from Jim Johnson. And Spagnuolo was there. Gordon breaks into the secondary. Melvin Gordon in a foot race. He'll win it. Denver back on top. 47 yards. Just got done praising the Chiefs defense. And Denver's running game gets loose. Melvin Gordon, another guy who missed last week. Watch Bolton right here shoot inside. I feel like that opened things up when the backers came with pressure. Center, Cushenbury does a nice job of coming up to him, and then it just frees up. Outstanding job of feeling that blitz from that backer and then cutting back to the outside to his left where there was a nice seam there, and then he just outruns everybody. Melvin Gordon running today with some purpose, running through some arm tackles. The purpose is show what he can do. You know, Gordon and Williams each came into the game with 800 plus running yards. Denver, the only team in the league with a tandem of guys at that 800 yard mark, and they've got the lead again by four, 21 17. Well, the Broncos used to be in the Chiefs position. They won five consecutive AFC West titles. Peyton Manning rode off into the sunset after winning Super Bowl 50, and things have gone south in a hurry. That's their most recent postseason game. And Vic Fangio, with 29 losses in his first three seasons, 11 different starting quarterbacks since Peyton retired. It's a very proud franchise. You know, three Super Bowl championships. They played in eight Super Bowls. Amazing. You may, you may not realize that if you're a younger fan. Yeah. Only New England has played in more Super Bowls than Denver. And they went 45 years without having back-to-back -back losing seasons. Think about that. So for them to have five in a row, it's, it's jarring. Yeah. And they said they would come out and, you know, you wonder, are you really going to be inspired at the last game of the season and what's been a disappointing year to knock off your, your rivals? And they've shown it. I, I, how can you not be impressed? Showing all that, the history, the tradition, how frustrating things have been. And then they have nothing to play for, technically, right? They, they can't get to the postseason. And yet, I, I think a lot of people who follow the Broncos thought after that opening touchdown by the Chiefs to start the second half, all right, here we go again. How about the answer by Denver to come right back? When it was third and 13, Kirk, I thought, oh, boy, momentum is really shifting here because that Chiefs front was making some yeah, plays. Yeah. About to get the football That's, back. It felt and then that a way. Nice throw to Patrick. True, yeah, True Lock makes a throw. You know, I spent a lot of time here throughout my life and the culture of this program, the, the fan base, the passion, it, it, I think it remains strong. Now, it's getting frayed, and they need to turn things around. They need to be one of those teams that comes from the bottom of the division and makes a push for a title next year. There's big-time urgency going forward. But they could get some momentum towards that today. And Mahomes under pressure and a man around his legs when he delivered the pass, and it was Chuck. So, so, again, they get pressure up front by Harris and company, but it's the coverage downfield, the linebackers, the crossing routes, the way they're leveraging and doing a good job of taking those away. And it's by the time Mahomes finds somebody that's freed up, it's his second, third, fourth option. And against this defensive front, you just don't have that kind of time. They're getting pressure with four, and Vic Fangio and company doing a good job of mixing up the looks and confusing Mahomes on a lot of these throws. Is this is this crowd noise at mile high for a Denver defense? Chiefs need four. Mahomes coolly gets it out and delivers to Pringle, who's got a first down across the 35. That time, instead of working through the progressions, it's just a quick read out to the outside where Pringle, little inside outside move against the soft corner. Surprise Denver. That's soft in coverage on third down and about four.
Pringle four catches today made a really big impact. He didn't do much his first three years in the league. Now with more than 40 catches, only showing what he can do. McKinnon, who just scored the touchdown, not the biggest back, but plows forward for a big first down gain of seven. And we've talked a lot about the defense improving for the Chiefs and, and, and the scheme and Patrick Mahomes after a, a three and four start, how they become more patient. Looks like Baron Browning, rookie out of Ohio State, down. Broncos have seen too much of this, an injury to a linebacker. We'll see if he's okay after this break. Baron Browning helped off. He's the Chiefs second and three. Just making a point there before the injury about this this team who the Chiefs make it all the way to the Super Bowl last year and then they struggled in that game against Tampa Bay Tom Brady especially that defense where Mahomes was was hurried 29 times Super Bowl record they come back four new offensive linemen on this offensive line for Mahomes when they started three and four it took them time to build that continuity Hardman on the edge Ooh, just about broke through the tackle there of Caden Stearns. I mean, they went out and got Orlando Brown through a trade. You can see that. How about Joe Tooney comes over from New England. Been a mainstay. Actually had to play left tackle last year when Orlando Brown went down. Then the two rookies, Creed Humphrey, has been amazing in the middle. Just a leader and an outstanding player out of Oklahoma. And Trey Smith out of Tennessee at right guard. So you got four new starters up there. And Smith with the 226 pick in the sixth round yeah. starting. Up there, yeah. Huh? yeah, that's a On first down, weaving again, and just has to throw it away. The hot pursuit on the far side there is Stephen Weatherly. When he takes off to run, you know you you, you got to be aware. No matter where you are, I mean Kelsey works here. You got receivers on the back side, but as he rolls around, you know you you got to be careful. You look look back here. All the way to the back side. He's always looking to try to find somebody. So you better, they call it plaster, plastering the receivers. When they scramble, these Chiefs receivers, there's one of them that goes down to Robinson. They adjust very well to his scramble. And this defense being tuned into that. Mahomes on the edge. McKinnon. Slam down. Jamudia. Third down coming up. Chiefs are starting to realize, you know, a lot of their best plays right now are just checking it down and, and hoping, a, you know, whether it's a McKinnon or a Hardman can try to break a tackle. That's what they did with McKinnon on that last touchdown. This time, Denver with a much better job of leveraging the football and coming up with a tackle sets up this big third down. Three receivers to the left. Mahomes looks back the other direction and delivers incomplete. Trying to get it to Josh Gordon. Very tight coverage by Ojemudia. Had a frustrating year, bothered by a hamstring. Hadn't played at all this season until last game. Uh, OJ Mudia, good job of timing this up. It's just great to see him back. He's been injured so much. Ball thrown a little bit to the inside that gives him a chance. And keep in mind, if you're watching this defense play, Patrick Sertan is out today. Other side, Ronald Darby, their other corner, out today. Leading tackler and one of the leaders of the defense, Kareem Jackson, out today. Three starters in that secondary out against Mahomes and playing well and holding up. Townsend tries to bounce the ball dead. And the Chiefs can't corral it. Marcus Kent couldn't uh, down Denver at the one, so they don't execute that well. And Denver back to work on offense up by four midway in the third quarter. It's going to be fun next weekend. It all begins Super Wild Card Weekend with the doubleheader on Saturday, triple header on Sunday, and on Monday, the first ever Monday Night Football Wild Card game here on ABC ESPN. The Megacast coverage also part of that. Peyton and Eli checking in over on ESPN2. Get between the lines on ESPN Plus and Deportes, Spanish language version of the game. 
So the Chiefs planned to pin Denver back at the one didn't work as they couldn't corral that high bouncing punt. Yeah. Broncos back Ball themselves started. up five yards. Offense number 85, five yard penalty. First down. And we haven't, really see, afternoon here. haven't seen a lot of this, which has helped Drew Locke have a pretty good day of make again decision making, working through progressions. It's been an area he's really emphasized in getting better. Recognizing man coverage on a third down. Nobody in the middle using his legs for his second touchdown of the game. And then in the opening drive of the second half after a Kansas City score, feels that safety, keeps him there with Fant the tight end, and then makes that throw to the outside. Another third down conversion. Behind the six here on first down, a lot of adrenaline, I thought, early from Locke. He tried to hit Judy deep. There were some overthrows, but he's settled in. Escapes pressure. A flag is down in the holding area. Maybe a second penalty on the Broncos in this series going the wrong way. Yeah, they're going to get the left tackle right in front of there. Bowles just grabs on. Looked like that Mike Dana. You thought it might be important. Holding offense. Number 72. That penalty is declined. Second down. The, the Chiefs couldn't down the ball at the one, but the Broncos are just moving that direction anyway. Yeah, that's right. And, and by the way, remember those runs that were working out? You know, it's it's tough to do. Again, the adjustments are is recognizing that threat of Drew Locke running the football. He, he's he's clearly been drilled in not to force the ball, and so the result of that is him using his legs a little bit more. The first sack of the game in second and 20. Williams comes back in the game. And Locke fires to him. Lost the ball on the ground. Picked up. And they're going to rule it incomplete. It wasn't a whistle. It was scooped up by Thornhill. Third down. It was ruled incomplete. That's a relief from Denver fans. Yeah, it looked like he never quite had possession of that football. Back to the inside, and he see it looks like he's kind of fighting to get the handle of that football. But this is this, this is what they wanted to avoid all game, and now they've done a good job of, of of that. These third and longs, they've been really for the most part on schedule. In fact, they're five of eight on third down because it's been pretty manageable. But here, you just don't want to make a critical mistake. When is a drop a good thing? When it would have catch it a fumble. <laughs> from his goal line just kind of flips it off and Williams will get some of the yardage back but two penalties dooming the Denver offense as the Bridgewater looks on seven and seven as a starter they were over 500 when he got knocked down with the latest concussion and missed the last three yeah just a great leader brings so much to the table with his knowledge from a tangible standpoint leadership just his presence in the building a great strength of his. Players really love him. Another year left on his contract. Martin, not his best. Hughes lets it bounce and it bounces backwards. So Mahomes and Kansas City will have excellent field position here. Taking over at the 42, trying to reclaim the lead here in mile high. 417 to go in the third. In Philly, the fine rookie, Devontae Smith, of course, last year's Heisman Trophy winner from Alabama, warming up. Many top-line Eagles sitting out, but he needs 37 yards to break the Eagles' receiving yards record. And he looks like he's 875 yards already as a rookie, chance to break that record. See the NFC playoff picture. Doesn't mean a lot for the Eagles. That's why they're sitting a lot of those guys out. Packers have clinched home field in Lambeau in the first round by. A little bit more clear in the, the NFC than it is the AFC. Yes, substantially. The Chiefs had hoped to keep the pressure on Tennessee at competition for home field in the bye. Needing a win today to put the pressure on the Titans who play in Houston. The Broncos reclaiming the lead after Mahomes and company went right down the field. First possession of the third quarter. This is their best starting field position. Mahomes still got it and flips it very late. 
And the belldozer, Blake I Bell, the tight end out of Oklahoma, makes the catch. I think he's across. I think he's across the line. Here, I think there's a flag down. He was buying time and buying time. I think you're yeah. right. He's at the, the line of scrimmage is a 43. He was almost at the 45. He tried to go laterally, tried to get sideways, thinking he was maybe still behind. Here's the 43. Illegal forward pass. His whole body Offense, gets across there. It's a five-yard penalty. It's a loss it down. It's second Not down. often you see Patrick kind of lose no. his sense of where he is in yeah, the field. It yeah. negates a nice one-headed catch by Bell. I saw his reaction like, whoa, what? what are you? I think he thought he was just maybe about a half yard still behind the line. And it just, it just any body part at all behind the line, and he's good. But his, his right arm and hand as he started to throw the ball was across the line. And good call by the officials. So second and 14. Gore went in motion and said it's Kelsey underneath. Flag in as Kelsey barrels into Denver territory, but that's in the holding zone. And all of a sudden, penalties yeah. piling up for both teams. They have been critical Holy for the Chiefs today. Offense, number 62. And yeah, they got Tooney. Ten yard penalty. Second You're right, Chris. I mean, we're, we're just not, you're not used to no. seeing this, right? I mean, it, it, the execution is usually pretty flawless, and, and another positive play that's it's going to have to come back. Tooney. Two really sound teams that don't usually hurt themselves with penalties. That's a second crucial hold yep. for the Chiefs offensive line. Tooney, 62. Watch him on the left guard. Watch what he does. He's just trying to hurry up to get out there to help Humphrey on this screen to try to get in front of Kelsey. But in the process of getting out there, he just grabs a hold of the jersey there of Harris and pulls it. Well, you like a challenge, Mr. Mahomes? And it's second and 24. Play clock winding down, crowd back in it. Mahomes steps up, again running sideways, will tuck the ball and be forced out at the 34 by Aaron Browning. Let's go to John Perry, who had a different opinion about that holding call. John? That's not so much different opinion. It's very subjective, though. When you get into the screen offense, offensive players are allowed, based on our interpretation, to strip that player away so they can get downfield. I don't really see it as an offensive hold. That's an important call, though, because the threatens to ruin this Chiefs drive, third and 20. Well, I love how John said it's subjective. You know, I mean, it, each guy maybe evaluates that and sees it a little differently. Broncos rush three. Mahomes has all kinds of time and delivers a pass to Pringle. Every time he's caught a pass, it's been a first down. He'll come up just short that time at the Broncos 49. Jonas Griffith stopped him. Pringle working on the hat on the inside of the slot and does a nice job of not giving up on this route. Look how physical that is. I mean, he's, he's working right there. He has to be able to get off that linebacker, which eventually he does. But it took a little bit of work to pull away from Griffith. Chiefs athletic trainers all the way across the field to look at Pringle who was down in the Denver bench but he's up moving off that's his fifth catch today he got 19 on third and 20 sets up a fourth down near midfield good to see him up and coming off Tyreek Hill in fact who's been hobbling and not playing a lot now comes back onto the field and no attempt to pin Denver deep this time and you read with the offense on the field. on the run delivers a low throw just enough for the first down as Tyreek Hill drive alive. How many times have you seen that right over the years Mahomes getting the ball to Tyreek Hill out in the flat quickly on short yardage ball just a little bit behind but great separation and such suddenness from Tyreek Hill a little inside move to kind of freeze Fuller and Fuller knew that out is either a slant or an outside move he goes back outside and they get that first down McKinnon cuts it back and the first catch for the electric fastest football player in the world is a one yard game but it's an important one yard yeah, absolutely and an amazing you pick up a first down like that you go back to the running game which hasn't been a, a strength tonight necessarily and, you, and they get a good a really good push there let McKinnon lower that shoulder and get some positive yards there good job up front with Humphrey Tooney and Trey Smith the interior of that line Jared McKinnon playing a key role today has a touchdown and 
the field again. Mahomes gets the ball out. And that's the catch made by Marcus Robinson on the far side. That's right near the marker. Just have that feeling that as this game progresses, it, it's going to come down to red zone execution for Kansas City. It's another area that, that Andy Reid would tell you that's it's always important. But really, with the way defenses are playing them, letting them throw underneath comes down to defenses trying to squeeze them in the red area. And they got to come up with touchdowns. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter now. Score. Makes a cut. They use that power running game to pick up about four. Jonathan Cooper stopped him. That could be it for the third quarter. Jonathan Cooper was all the way on the back side. You know, it's another good job by George Payton drafting. They found Jonathan Cooper late, and he has stepped up with all their injuries to really give them a, a lift at that linebacker core. Broncos up by four. 15 minutes to play a mile high. Can number 15 engineer a fourth quarter comeback for Kansas City and keep alive their hopes of that top seed in the AFC? In honor of ski country, two different trails the Chiefs are trying to take to get towards Super Bowl 56 to the left. If they can come back and win this game, get a little help, could be the one seed or the two seed of the Titans win. The double black diamonds to the right. If they don't come back and win this game, could drop to the, the three or the four. It gets trickier. Mahomes has never played a playoff game on the road. Not counting that Super Bowl last and black year. diamond is still treacherous now. It's not the easy. The double black is tougher, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, yeah. Final quarter begins on the second six. Mahomes rolls and throws back across his body, trying to find Demarcus Robinson. And lurking back in coverage there was Draymond Jones laid across the middle, Mr. Herbstein. Yeah, I mean, Draymond Jones, the defensive lineman. I mean, wa watch him move back to the back side of this. He's twisting in here and just kind of gives up. He says, no one, this guy, he might throw it. I mean, how about the awareness of a defensive lineman to have to think about the potential of a crossing receiver and making a play on it. That's just awareness and instincts there by the big fella, Draymond Jones. Third and six. Home steps up, ball comes out ugly. Looks like his arm was hit. Bradley Chubb in that Bronco defense. Just bumping over there, it's fourth down. Looked like Steven, Shamar Steven, 99 in front of him. Watch 99 get his hand up, knock that down. Does a nice job of deflecting. I was with you, I thought Chubb might have gotten in from behind, but he did not. He's up in front, the ball is batted down, and the Denver defense gets a stop. Stefan, big six foot five player, and in comes Harrison Butker. 51 yards, made it earlier from 34, but the footing has been an issue. You need to be confident to drive it from here. And it is a line drive just powered right through from 51. And the Chiefs, with good field position, drive it only 25 yards. Smile from Fangio, his team still has the lead, 21-20 now. Uh, that, again, they, Kansas City had pretty good field position there after the, the Denver punt. Still a little tentative. That's like a two-iron. Just, just easing tee, right? his way. He's smart. I mean, he knows what he's doing. If you just tuned in, he had serious footing issues in pregame, changed his cleats, went back to the original, had a kickoff today where he lost his footing and went down. And now, every time he's out on that field, he's been very smart with kind of using his balance and kind of using his weight to his advantage. But... Not, not just powering through that football. So the Chiefs trying to avoid a two-game skid at the end of the season. Remember, we talked about the uncharacteristic start off that Super Bowl loss, three and four. Teams playing Mahomes differently. The impatience, the interceptions, and then the turnaround offensively and defensively, putting themselves in position to claim that top seed before the Bengals came back late last week to win the division. And... Force this one to be a meaningful game for the Chiefs. Didn't that almost feel like more about Cincinnati and Joe Burrow and, and Jamar Chase than, than maybe what Kansas City wasn't able to do? See the turnover troubles earlier. We've talked a lot about Mahomes cleaning that up. The defense playing complimentary football, that eight-game winning streak. But 
came undone last week. Yeah, and, and again, I, some of these throws, there's pretty good coverage, and Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow just, just making play after play, building momentum into that second half, and eventually the walk-off and the touchdown to, or field goal there to, to win it. Joe Burrow, I think people around the league starting to really take notice of what he can do. The Broncos still protecting a lead. Back to work, hoping to get that running game going. Gordon had a touchdown on earlier. And moves for six here. He came into this game thinking about Javante Williams and that's offensive line and what Pat Shermer as a play caller, veteran in this league, would have to do. And they, to their credit, they've been balanced. They've gotten just enough out of Drew Locke in his passing game. And Melvin Gordon has been an outstanding compliment tonight. It's great to see Williams and Gordon healthy together. Both came in over 800 yards rushing. All three Denver touchdowns on the ground. On the other side, Mahomes is the leading runner for Kansas City. Different field today. Gordon, heavy traffic. Melvin Ingram got there in a hurry. Eventually getting into the ground was Sneed. Third down. Hasn't really been about keep away. No. Just 17 minutes of possession. The Chiefs have had the ball, just haven't been able to create that many dynamic plays. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they run the ball on second down, and you think, oh, they, they stopped him there. But but look at again the down and distance. This is where Shermer's entire goal and where they've been for the most part in this game, where it's manageable, gives him options as a play caller. The option for Locke is to check it down, and Gordon's got a first down, shoved out across the 35 by Snead. Again, Locke, last year, all the interceptions, where has he improved where, the most? Third down decision making. Watch the eyes, left, knows all along he's going to dump it to Gordon, but he's moving the defense, controlling the defense with his eyes, eventually dumps it down to Gordon and picks up that first down. Good call by Pat Shermer as well. Nice to see Gordon back and having a nice finale to this season. He knows where his future will take him, but he's showing what he can do. Three tight ends in for Denver. Different look. All one out of this. And Gordon and the men. They'll take that first down gain every series. Are they mixing up those formations? You mentioned the three tight ends. Go with that 13 personnel with a one back, the three tight ends, and a, and a good push this time from the left side. This offensive line, the much maligned offensive line over the last three games, haven't been able to run the ball at all. I said it earlier against the Chargers and the Raiders and the Bengals. It, it has been tough sledding and not doing a very good job of sustaining blocks. Young group up front, and they have answered the bell against this defense for the Chiefs. They've run it well against the Chiefs in both meetings now. Play action. Lock on the move, slings it. Sutton, first down into Chiefs territory at the 44. But mixing all these different formations, they went with a three tight end look again. They motion all the way across with Sutton. See him there coming across. Nobody gets outside. That time Sneed the corner because he got the three tight ends a little bit confused with that pre-snap movement. Nobody picks up Sutton. He's just hanging out as a check down on the outside. Hey, First catch for Cortland Sutton. Having a nice bounce back year after the knee injury ruined last season. Catch 58 on the season. And a flag before the snap is fumbled. Illegal snap. Offense. Number 79, five-yard penalty. Cushionberry, the First center. Down. You don't see this very often where the center, bring everybody else is sitting and waiting. Oops. Locke better have his hands ready for that snap. Cushionberry has snapped the ball, not often under center, but to Joe Burrow, part of that LSU National yeah. Championship 20, team in 2019. 2019. What a, what a bright future he has as a young offensive lineman. Quiet, mature guy. Denver behind the six on the first down. It's Williams in the game. In a hurry. Snap it at two. And lock to Williams. 
He's got some space. Lowers the shoulder, kind of delivers the blow to the Honey Badger there. Yeah, they're still having a hard time with this three tight end look, and you've got to watch these these the linebackers. You got to get outside. Nobody's getting to the outside. I think they're confused with that look right now, and a lot of the times you're getting some pre-snap movement that's affecting the eyes of the linebackers and the safeties and the communication. Second time in a row, maybe third on this drive that we've seen them outflanked and a simple little check down just outside with, with room to work. That's seven yards. Williams is no fun to tackle. High or low, it's tough to win against him. Come in, come in, come in. Hey, steelhead, steelhead, steelhead. Got to hurry here. Does he see it? Trying to direct traffic with one on the play clock. They just, well, actually, it was Fangio who spotted the play clock winding down. Did not want to take the five-yard penalty. I think Javante penalty. Williams may have called Parts the timeout. The timeout. Denver. Whoever made it, made a sharp <laughs> call. First. Lock was over there directing people and not noticing the clock. This becomes an important possession. You see a, a smile from Locke, and now this is what the Denver team said they were going to do, come in, play inspired. We talked about what this game meant to Locke, and again, that, that losing streak against the Chiefs, it is a professional embarrassment for this franchise to lose to one one opponent 12 times in a row winless since Manning retired and that for them for them was a huge motivation today and we're seeing it carry into the fourth quarter with a chance to to finish the job which hasn't been easy for this team yeah. finishing yeah yeah that's been that's been something that uh, has been lacking but I, I you know obviously you want to win the game but uh, with what they have at stake today showing a lot of pride Lock gets it out. Pitch, catch, first down. Tim Patrick's been a very effective weapon today. And they keep kind of working the outside. They got out of that three tight end look. And this time they're they're just spreading them out. Again, the corners are dropping. You get one on one with a receiver, with a linebacker who's sitting in zone and able to pull away. And this offense right now has a very nice rhythm to it on this drive. Very few fireworks. You know, Patrick has the one really long pass play today. It's the only catch longer than 21 yards. Lock four for four in this drive. Into a run blitz. This is Williams getting the corner, patiently using a block and barreling down into the red zone. That was nifty stuff from the rookie from North Carolina. Watch, watch Cushenberry here help out on the blitz from Matthew. He's going to come all the way out here and be able to pick up the blitz from the outside, pushes it outside, and allows Javante Williams to be able to get underneath it, and then the speed to be able to pull away from William Gay. And then dance around the block on the edge from Patrick. He did a good job against Ward. Denver up a point, threatening in the red zone. Now can they find the end zone? Directing traffic using the entire play clock. Gordon makes a quick cut. Shows the leg drive and is shoved by a lineman down inside the 10. I, you know, I thought Melvin Ingram had a chance there. He was able to get off of the block of Cam Fleming. Got into the backfield. But Melvin Gordon's able to bounce to the outside around that. Right there, he gets around 24. And then how about the move back to the inside there that he puts on Ward? How about the leg drive moving backwards by Gordon? This is a impressive drive in the fourth quarter by this Denver offense. Power football, play 10 on the drive coming up. Again, Kirk, three tight ends in. Use that formation a bit in his possession. Gordon could not have been and lost the ball. Gordon fumbles and it's picked up. Nick Bolton. The former Missouri Tiger with a game-changing play. A scoop and score. Melvin Ingram knocked the ball loose from Melvin Gordon. And the Chiefs have the lead, and this crowd is stunned. Wow. Wow. Right here, just darts. He did it on the previous play. Neither tight end picks him up. So he hits Melvin Gordon as soon as he gets his hand on the ball. And as you say, Chris, it's the rookie, Nick Bolton, who picks it up. 
just darts into that backfield. There's the presence finally felt of Melvin Ingram. And that was Drew Locke unable to make the tackle and his former Missouri teammate. Locke was a veteran. Bolton was a young guy on the scout team, given the number one offense problems, Locke told us. That time he gave the Broncos a big problem, the scoop and score, the go for two here. Try to stretch the lead to seven. Ten play drive, and they were all the way down to the nine-yard line. We were talking about the Broncos' problems with finishing. Finishing when they're in a winning position. Now they have to fight from behind. McKinnon in the backfield with his two-point play. Mahomes, can he run it in? Yes, easily standing up and just fires the ball against the wall. In many ways, it's been a frustrating game for Mahomes, but that two-point play makes it a seven-point lead. The 86-yard fumble return after Melvin Ingram knocked the ball loose from Gordon, who's having a tremendous afternoon until this moment. And then Nick Bolton scoops it up. And the rookie from Missouri has 106 tackles this year, takes it to the house. Suddenly, Denver down seven, 7.42 to play. Latest episode of The Man in the Arena, Tom Brady's account of his 10 Super Bowl seasons, available Tuesday, 9 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. This one focuses on the breakdown of Super Bowl 53. Pats beat the Rams 13-3. Wow, we talked about it. Things that Denver has done right today, but just finishing the inability to do that. They're in a position to build on a one point lead, and suddenly, Melvin Gordon, ball punched loose by Ingram. I'll show you the, the mix up in the right side of that offensive line that led to it. There's the ally exceptional plays yeah, Kirk. out on the edge there the two tight ends with Quebuno, Kunam and Fant just a miscommunication out to the outside they had actually walked up William Gay 50 and I think that caused some kind of miscommunication on the right side they over the Chiefs overloaded that side and especially impacted the two tight ends out on the edge they, they let Ingram go, who is a mainstay and a focal point of any offense, especially at the eight-yard line with his physicality and quickness. And they, they just a mix-up miscommunication. He, he got in free. Longest scoop and score this season in the NFL for Bolton. If you're Denver, you go from second and two, the Chiefs nine with the lead, to suddenly being down seven, 75 yards away. But they sneak Patrick out, and Tim Patrick Still running into Kansas City territory. He has been the guy for Locke today in the passing game. Boy, nice job by Drew Locke. Sits in there. Jaron Reed closing in on him. Keeps his focus downfield. And again, a mix-up in coverage by Ward. 81 Patrick has made some plays. This time, the, the zone is flooded with a receiver downfield that takes the corner. And then they bring in Patrick right behind it. There's no one there left to pick him up. 29 yard gain. Here we go, set. Lock taking a shot, looking again for Patrick. He was covered. Crowd wants a flag and doesn't get one. Sneed in coverage. It's hard to get a call when the receiver's looking over his right shoulder, he's looking over his left shoulder. He didn't know where the football is. I think it's hard on an official to call that. He, he, I don't know if there was even enough contact there. I mean, he touches him on the on the hip, but hard to sell that when your own receiver can't locate the football. And John Perry agrees with that assessment. That snaps a streak of six completions for Lot. I just like how Denver's after that devastating turnover, they've come right back. Williams. Agreed. Come this right would back. Be, uh, this would be surprising given how they've struggled to finish games. You know, you, you, you talked the pregame comments from Justin Simmons. He said it's just like there's a barrier there. And it's a barrier that we haven't been able to get over in these close losses. And they're trying to break through the barrier. 
Well, right now. And think about the last three weeks. You're sitting there at seven and six. As bad as things have been, seven and six with three winnable games. And to lose all three in the fashion in which they did. So, yeah, there's a bit of a barrier. But again, how they played today coming off of that says a lot. Need six. Pressure. Lock lofting it down there for Judy who makes a catch. Jerry Judy finally making an impact play. He beat Hughes, and the Broncos are at the 14. He brings him back intentionally, underthrows his ball. Watch Hughes, the corner. He's going downfield. He fears Judy going vertical. Ball brings him back, and Hughes never located the football. So they're bringing him back the right throw there by Drew Locke. Corners, even at this level, Sometimes a hard time when they're out there on an island trying to find that football and adjusting back. Last game heating up a 28 yard gain on third and six. Denver right back in the red zone. Williams. And the heavy traffic. Ingram who just forced the fumble moments ago on that stop. I was going to say one thing you, you think. They're not going to get off the edge against them on, on this drive, right? But Ingram, they actually moved to the inside. They, they brought up the, the inside linebacker, Willie Gay. He was over the tight ends. And they bring Ingram with his size into the inside to try to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And Kirk, they move the ball well, but they need a touchdown here. <laughs> so we're going to look for a play, coach. <laughs> Spaced out. Lock. Looks across the middle. End zone into heavy traffic. And it was broken up and waving a finger is Rashad Fenton. Third and nine. Uh, to the right, Jerry Judy beat his man on the right slot. I mean, you had a linebacker there. But he elects to go back to the left. Really tight window there and a nice job by Fenton not getting that left hand on the shoulder to get the interference but working around Patrick to be able to knock that ball loose but boy Jerry Judy on the right incredible move to the outside and then back to the inside and beat his man one on one Gordon is back in the game for the first time since the fumble three receivers to the right on third and nine. Lock looking left, lofts it, and it was wide. That was Fance. You had coverage there from Daniel Sorensen, and it's fourth and nine. And here comes the field goal. Team. His body movement. Watch him falling off of the throw. That affected the accuracy. He's falling back and trying to make a throw to Fant, who had a favorable matchup there one-on-one -on -one against Sorensen. But by dropping back, Chris, it just took him and made the ball go too far to the outside to his left. Crowd reaction to the field goal attempt he is not positive. Brandon McManus from 31. High snap put down by Martin. And Denver cuts into the Kansas City lead, but it's still four with 437 to play. Impressive 62 yard drive. Stalls in the red zone. Can they get the ball back from Mahomes? go back and look at Judy on that on that second down play see that there's that move to the inside it, it, again he looks left he decided to go there and then on third down look at Bolton blitzing in the middle a little bit of pressure but I think it's more about him falling off of that throw that affected the the accuracy there Lux had a heck of a night but he'd love to have that one back and that's NFL football the quarterback position right you you have a couple chances where you do you make the right read? Do you make the right throw? Do you yeah. pick the right guy? And it's a touchdown to Judy. I think if he if he does throw to the this, right. Keep in mind, this is a guy that last year in 13 games had 15 interceptions, tied for the most in the league. And, and so far, three starts, last two, and then tonight, he hadn't thrown an interception. So. But as he said, taking care of the ball, yeah, he, he needs to do that. But ultimately, it's unsatisfying if you can't get the W. There's the former... Ohio State Buckeye Zeke Elliott all smiles as the Cowboys warm up on deck from Philadelphia. And when I was younger, growing up watching those Cowboys Eagles games, Harold Carmichael, yeah. Wilbert Montgomery, Danny White. Who were you pulling for? I was a big Cowboys fan. Were you really? In that area. I was yeah. for the Eagles. Yeah, in those games. I was a Cowboys guy. Drew Pearson, Tony Hill. All right. 
in Kansas City lead out this clock. Up four, four and a half. Hardman's got it. Look out. Hardman in space. Juking. Cuts back and is finally knocked down to the 30. Ball comes out late. It's ruled down. Justin Simmons on the stop, but a massive gain. You motion him, yards. motion him to the outside, and now you're just trying to get him outflanked. You got a couple blockers outside, and watch how they, once they pick up just a couple blocks, now it's a foot race. Now you're just trying to outrun the safety, Caden Stearns, which he's able to do. Great spacing, nice jock by Kelsey getting out in front. And 17, he doesn't need a lot of room with that kind of speed that he has after catching a short pass. McKinnon dancing. And lowers the shoulder. These Chiefs are so hard to beat. We talked about the complimentary football. You've got the sensational quarterback. Denver's done a pretty good job keeping him in check. The Time running out. game's been kept in check. Kirk Denver. Mahomes is actually the leading rusher. They're and second. it's a scoop and score yeah. that invigorated KC defense is going to perhaps be the difference yeah. in this one. Yeah, whatever it takes, whether it's special teams, defense making a play. Mahomes gets so much of the attention. But now this is what separates great teams. This four-minute offense trying to work clock, trying to pick up first downs trying to hold on to this lead. Again, Denver inside the Kansas City nine with a second and two. Ingram, the immediate penetration. He caught Gordon off guard. He couldn't yeah. believe he was in there that quick. Oh, and I mean, that, that, that uh, is just something you don't see very often with a running back that literally as he's taking the football from Drew Locke, he gets hit. Locke and, had a chance to make a tackle and his former Missouri teammate couldn't do it. And Bolton showing his speed. And Kansas City, you're right. This is what separates elite teams. Yep. And they're trying to win a 13th consecutive divisional road game. It's one of the longest streaks of all time. Trying to extend their mastery of the Broncos to 13 in a row. Denver down to just one timeout now. McKinnon elects a low throw. He has given this Chiefs offense some juice. Williams and Gore are physical. McKinnon, a quicker guy, had the touchdown earlier. Played a big role today. And Denver's going to use their last timeout. And that, that, that's the thing. Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey are timeout. such a big part of this Denver. offense. They're I think third. you got it. If you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, timeout. with Tyreek Hill being hobbled and not playing much, who is going to step up? Who is going to step up besides Kelsey? And we, we've seen a number of guys be able to do that. McKinnon's kind of come out of nowhere and been able to make some plays. And I think Mikkel Hardman also, uh, you know, being able to become that guy after the catch. Quick pass, make a guy miss and get upfield. He's become that Tyreek Hill in this game. That would make it extra frustrating for Denver because for the second game this season, Mahomes doesn't go crazy. They contain both Kelsey and Hill and other guys may find a way to squeeze out a win. Out of timeouts, three and a half to play. Chiefs in the red zone. McKinnon dodges traffic, early penetration there by Draymond Jones. Gets away for a gain. Just two yards. Now we, we thought we'd see a lot of Williams. We thought maybe at times we'd see Derek Gore. I mean, Jarek McKinnon coming into tonight, just so you know. Seven carries, 38 yards on the season. Right. And what he's doing tonight. Nicole Hardman, a 100 yard game on his eight receptions. Now it's the Chiefs with a three tight end look. McKinnon right up the gut and be knocked down at the 12. And the next time they'll snap, it'll be. Just around the two minute warning. What a push up front, especially in the interior. Look at 62 Tooney, 52 Humphrey, Trey Smith. I always want to talk about the skill. I always like to talk about those offensive linemen, especially in the fourth quarter when they start leaning on people and they start being the difference in a game. Let's see what the Broncos defense can do here. If they can force. Field goal attempt. Mm -hmm. Still a one score game. Holmes going to work this clock down to one second. Play clock will expire just before two minute warning. Call that timeout. So then call that timeout. 
want to play here. Time out. See if they can. Kansas City. Keep the drive going. Well, it basically comes down. You, the field. Yeah, you pick up this first down and yeah. game's over. It's a two minute warning will stop the clock and that's it. This is. I mean, we talked about who would step up with Tyreek Hill down and Hardman who remember when they drafted him out of Georgia I thought boy they already have Tyreek Hill and now you get Hardman to go along with it and those quick throws with defenders back they've always accounted on, on picking up huge yards after short throws and he's been able to do that. Here we go third and three. Hill is in the game in the slot to the right. Mahomes rolls to the right and delivers it, but there's a whistle before the play. Ball start. Oh boy. Offense. Number 77. Five-yard penalty. Third down. It's Andrew Wiley. He could be crucial. Just got more difficult this third down play. And, and what a surprise. You see what the play call was, right? Number 10 comes yep. comes out and they just throw that quick pass to the outside. Actually, he's actually going out now. But those short yardage situations, Mahomes rolling normally to his right, boom, sidearm to Tyreek Hill, where you know it's coming and you still can't stop it. But he is now out. Kelsey all the way up at the top of your screen. Looks for Kelsey, who makes the catch. He snuck free, found some space. Mahomes found him at the six. Just had a feeling with the game on the line. It was Kelsey's turn. Had somewhat of a quiet night. He scored the first touchdown, but it was his turn to step up and make a play, and he does on that big third down. He's limping off the field, but this catch by the stalwart tight end has set the Chiefs up in winning position. 158 to play. Back in Denver where you saw Travis Kelsey make a huge catch and then limp off the field. They've been looking at him. The athletic trainer saying it was a little bit of a hip tweak, but he's OK, good to go. Still limping a little bit on the sideline, but either way, got the thumbs up from the athletic trainer. The tweaks are OK, but yeah. you're talking about Hill and Kelsey potentially without the bye next week going into the playoffs. Yeah, that's right. Not 100 percent. That, that's right. I mean, and hopefully they're good to go and have a good week of resting up to get ready. But yeah, it's just if you're a Chiefs fan, you're seeing your two two your stars this game limping on and off the field. Rain beginning to fall in Denver. Precipitation arriving a little later than anticipated. Denver cannot stop the clock. And the Chiefs just kill it right here. Now we said elite teams work the four minute offense, work through the two minute warning, force their opponent to use their timeouts and secure victory. That's exactly what they did. Vic Fangio, I, I, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Denver. You, 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 you put it out there. It's well documented. Their struggles in his three years. But I'm going to one thing I would tell you, just as a football guy, you cannot deny his team still plays for him. It, despite their record, they still fight. I know they can't finish. They haven't been able to. But uh, an impressive effort against a really good team tonight. They just came up short. Well, 24 points on offense has been a bonanza by their standards. But the conversation will only Heighten here, the Chiefs moving to 12 and 5, and you know temporarily take a half game lead over the Titans, who did lose to the Texans earlier this year, but will be highly motivated to grab that top seed on yeah. the road. And of course, Tennessee beat Kansas City head to head, so if they beat the Texans tomorrow, they'll secure that number one seed. Which I lived in lived in Nashville for 11 years. I mean, that city will go crazy if they have home field advantage throughout. And in the meantime, the misery will continue for the Denver Broncos, who will finish at 7 and 10, losing to the Chiefs for a 13th consecutive time. Of all things, it's the longest scoop and score of the NFL season so far. The fumble forced by that guy, Melvin Ingram, picked up by linebacker Nick Bolton. And the rookie makes a massive play as Denver was down, knocking on the door, trying to build to a one point lead suddenly the touchdown the two point conversion and it was the Chiefs you know, one by led by seven and then Denver electing to kick that field goal and not go yeah. for it down there and never got the ball back and Melvin Ingram talking to Gordon like man I, 
I'm sorry, man. I, I, I just had to make that play. It's pretty cool to see Melvin it. on Melvin. Yeah, that was yeah, the play exactly. of the game, that wasn't was it? it? That was it. So the frustrating season ends for Denver, but they did, as you said, Kirk, show a lot of heart, play hard. What is the future of Drew Locke? That well. remains to be seen. In the meantime, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs can kick their feet up and watch the games tomorrow and learn of their seating. And he's with Laura. Patrick, how would you describe this win? I mean, it was tough. Uh, we didn't play the way we wanted to play in the first half, especially. Um, but that's a good football team. I mean, they were right there at the, in, the, in the playoffs, and playing here is never easy. So it was good, good to find a way to get a win. What did you think when you saw Nick Bolton scoop and score? I thought he was going to go down. I don't know if y'all saw. He almost went forward. Uh, no offense to Daniel Jones, but he almost gave one of those. And so, oh, no. uh, so uh, I thought he went down, but that was a heck of a play by Melvin Ingram. That's the reason we got him here. I mean, he makes plays like that. How would you describe what this team has done these last two weeks? Last week was a loss, obviously, but this week a gritty win. Heading into the postseason and tuning things up for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're going to be better. I mean, yeah. uh, we got what it takes. I mean, we have everybody in this locker room to do what we want to do. What's up, dog? Um, we got everybody in this locker room to do what we want to do, but uh, we got to be better if we want to make a run to the AFC because it's, it's a tough division. You get to put your feet up tomorrow and watch. Obviously, you guys need the Titans to lose to the Texans to get that top seed. You got a watch party plan. How are you going to go through all that? Yeah, we'll, we'll watch the game and everything like that. I mean, uh, we, we handled our business today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Regardless, either way, we got to go out there and win some football games, so we'll be ready to go. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Chris. Throws for 269 and two. He's the leading rusher on the team with 55 yards, and more importantly, the W. Yeah, and this team is going to get healthy, do what they need to do to find out who they play tomorrow night, and then and then start to lock in and do what they need to do to get Travis Kelsey to feel good, Tyree Kill. You know, they're 100 percent. They're still a very, very formidable and dangerous team. But hey, man, this is a lot of fun. Fun to see Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs have a chance to call this game. And you and I head to Indy tonight and get ready for the national championship with Alabama and Georgia. That'll be fun. I agree. This was a lot of fun as well to see one of the elite players in the league and see a franchise like Kansas City that just once again finds a way to get things done. Kelsey, touchdown early, kind of a quiet middle part of the game, and then the crucial catch to ice it and disappointment for Drew Locke and the Broncos again, not quite able to finish. Get over that barrier, as they said. 28-24, Kansas City Eagles. Cowboys coming up next. Let's send it now to Sam Ponder at the studio.